The book of Philippians says that he that started the good work in us will finish it until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And what does that mean? In today's video, I will be doing the Bible study with you all from the book of Philippians. So are you all ready for it? Let's get started. Hey you all and welcome back to my channel. My name is Ragini and I do upload faith-based videos twice a week. If you're one of those who loves hearing the word of God or doing the Bible study or hearing anything that's related to the word of God, please do not forget to like, share, comment and subscribe to this channel. That way you will be notified on time whenever we upload new videos and you're also helping the algorithm to reach out to all those people who are in need of hearing the word of God. In today's video, we are doing a Bible study from the book of Philippians chapter 1, verse 1 to 6. It's basically all about the introduction of Paul to the church of Philippi in Philippians. And we also see this main verse, which is from the book of Philippians chapter 1, verse 6, where it says, Being confident of this very thing, that he which had begun a good work in you, will perform it until the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. If you guys are ready for your Bible study, please go ahead and grab your water or your coffee. Also, you can open your Bible, um, the book of Philippians. We'll start with the context. I'll read it loud and then we'll dig deep into the verses. What is the book of Philippians all about? Paul thanks the church in Philippi for a gift they had sent him. And what is that gift? So the church in Philippi was helping Paul with finance. Paul thanks the church in Philippi for a gift that they had sent him. He uses this opportunity to encourage them to remain true to God and to be joyful in every situation. That is Paul's prayer to the church in Philippi, to be joyful in every situation. And he's writing this letter by encouraging them, praying for them and thanking them for their gift. The breakdown, chapter 1, is all about Paul rejoices in spite of his suffering. Chapter 2 is about serving as Jesus served. Chapter 3 is about warring against distorted teaching all or false preachers and teachers. And chapter 4 is all about personal notes. In today's video, our main concern is chapter 1, verse 1 to 6. And in our next video, we'll continue doing other chapters. The key concepts of this book of Philippians is thanks joy and suffering. So now I'm going to read the book of Philippians chapter 1 verse 1 to 6 and then we'll discuss in details about these verses. Paul starts with greetings. Uh, we see that in the book of Philippians chapter 1 verse 1, Paul and Timotheus, the servants of Jesus Christ, all the saints in Christ Jesus which are at Philippi with the bishops and deacons, grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 3, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine for you all making request with joy, for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Well, here we see that as always Paul is writing his letter with starting with his introduction and greetings where he says that Paul and Timothy, um, the servants of Jesus Christ, if you, if you notice this in all other letters, Paul normally says that an apostle of Jesus Christ and over here he uses the word servants and we as followers of Christ, we should also be introducing ourselves, I believe like that, or like let's say Ragini, a servant of Christ. Basically being follower of Christ, we are servants of Christ, daughters and sons of Christ, but also God's servants who are working through the help of Holy Spirit to fulfill all that God wants us to. Verse 2, he's also praying for them and blessing them by saying that grace be unto you and peace from our God, our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Here we see in verse 3, he's doing thanksgiving. He says that I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine for you all making request with joy for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now. The meaning of saints is a technical term referring not to the spiritual light, but to all Christians. The word means separated ones. 
Believers are separated in a dual sense. Number one, they are separated from all that is profane and set apart or reserved for God and his use. And number two, because they are separated from evil, they are morally pure and holy. So over here in context, I can see the keynotes which says over here that those saints are not the light ones only. Saints are Christians and as, as Christians or as believers, we are set apart for his glory, for his kingdom, for his works. Amen. And we also see in verse 5, Paul says, For your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now. Which means, for your fellowship in the gospel could also be stated as, because of your participation in the gospel. They helped Paul and his ministry to spread the word of God or the gospel. So he is thankful and praying for them. Uh, for this great fellowship he has with them. Main verse over here is verse 6, which I really want to uh, dig deep into with you all. So verse 6 says, Being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. He that begin a good work in us will come to finish it until the day of our Lord's return. Amen. So what does it mean? Let's dig deep into my study Bible and context, right? In my study Bible over here, it says, will perform it means, it is said, will finish it. Paul is convinced that the work of grace that God began in the Philippians at conversion will be divinely continued until the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. That is, the Lord will keep working in these believers. The Lord will keep on working in these believers who are chosen, set apart for his glory and kingdom until Jesus returns to earth, at which point he will finish his work, bringing it into completion. This speaks of the Christian's eternal security. This is a main eternal security for every Christian who are set apart, chosen, called to do the will of God, to spread the gospel, to plant the seeds or to sow the seeds. Amen. For God had a purpose in view when he began his saving work in the Philippians. And that purpose will neither be abandoned nor unrealized. God has the main purpose for all of us. And when he chooses you, when he calls you by your name for his kingdom and glory, we have to be sure that whatever he has started, he will finish it. And the word of God clearly helps us to understand the character of God, the will of God. So we learn from this entire passage or verse from verse 6 that how God started his work in the life of the Philippians and he promises that whatever he started he's going to finish and he's going to finish it until the day of our Lord Jesus return according to the book of Philippians chapter 1 verse 6 sanctification the word sanctification means to be set apart the Holy Spirit is attempting to make the believers holy or set apart and spiritual reflecting the character of God. That's the work of the Holy Spirit, who is our guide. This is being accomplished in three phases. First, the believer is forgiven and set apart to God at his conversion. So the very first thing is the believer, a Christian, is set apart. The first thing he or she is forgiven and set apart to God at their conversion. Okay? Which also means positional sanctification. So they're positioned with forgiveness and being set apart. Second, the believer is constantly being set apart from sin when he or she utilizes the means of grace. Example, the word of God and the prayer in his life. It also means progressive sanctification. So it means in our daily life, even when we sin and fall short, which we will, but the Holy Spirit picks us up back. And through the word of God and prayer, we are sanctified every single day. So that is progressive sanctification. Number three, complete sanctification. Now, when do we reach to the main goal, which is the complete sanctification? And that happens or that begins at death or the rapture. And is completed when the believer's spirit is re reunited with his resurrection body. That's what the complete sanctification means. So we have these three different sanctification processes and God is working through all of this. So how do we apply this verse or this lesson? Or this word of God in our life. We Christians should recognize that God uses all things to accomplish his purpose. All things, good or bad, to accomplish his purpose of making us like Jesus. Because we are called to be Christ-like. 
Amen. Therefore, we should cooperate with the Holy Spirit, being led by the Holy Spirit. It is very, very important to be led by the Holy Spirit because the Word of God clearly says, do not lean on your own understanding. We also see that from the book of Romans chapter 8, verse 28 and 29. I will read it for you all. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love Him, who have been called according to His purpose. For those God foreknew, He also predestinated to be confirmed to the image of His Son that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. Amen. We also read another cross-reference related to being led by the Holy Spirit uh, from the book of Matthew chapter 12, verse 31 and 32. And it says, And so I tell you, every kind of sin and slander can be forgiven, but blasphemy against the Spirit will not be forgiven. Anyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven. But anyone who speaks against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven, either in this age or in the age to come. So being led by the Holy Spirit is the main thing, important thing, and the will of God. Rather than leaning in our own understanding, we have to ask God to help us through His Holy Spirit to lead us. So that whatever we are saying and doing is not according to our own feelings but according to what God, through His Holy Spirit, is trying to tell us or is trying to use us for His kingdom and glory. Amen. So overall, guys, I really hope you got encouraged by doing this Bible study with me. If you have any questions or if you learned something else or you want to share something else about this specific verse or Bible study, please comment down below. I will see you all in my next video. Until then, God bless you all. Stay rooted in Christ.